everybody it's game night we are getting ready to get started thank y'all for your patience Whew, this has been a labor of love but you guys are here i'm here we're gonna roll right into it the way this works we play inclex questions for prizes so the fastest answer on the screen is going to get the most points and remember guys um that number one you're going to need a phone and a computer to be able to see so you are watching on the computer but then you're answering probably on your phone or tablet and then also it's always a shocker who wins because people sneak in at the last minute and then they end up getting the points and winning we got cash prizes tonight top prize is a hundred dollars second place is 75 dollars and third place is $50 so you can be rewarded for your knowledge on tonight. We're going to jump right into it. You guys have been so patient. All right, let's get started. Uh, am I doing the starting word? Y'all start it right now? Ready? All right. Okay, so and also for those of you who are just watching, probably let me tell you, I got 246, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, go to www kahoot.it if you're on your browser go to www.kahoot.it I actually got almost 500 people and then just put in the game pin the game pin is 233-3006 I see you Tasha R in Carrie Lolo Sherry comes I see you guys all right I'm gonna just get started I see people are rolling in if you sneak in just answer all right and look I love the emoji icons Tosh Nancy, God's favor in the house. Nia P, come on in. All right, we're rolling. Ready? Thumbs up. All right, I'm about to get started. Here are the questions. It's a scary topic. It's a scary, scary subject. All this week, and also I saw some people asking about the workbook. The workbook for scary topics is for Thursday. So Tonight is game night. Tomorrow we do have winning Wednesday. And then Thursday is the full scary topics review. So you need to have that workbook ready to go. Okay, pumpkin pie. You need to have that workbook ready to go. Okay, I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going in. All right, here we go. Ready? First question is this. Okay, game night scary topics, guys. We are in there. Three. Two, one, question. That means select all that apply, all right? Here we go, multi-select. A patient is admitted to the hospital with suspected polycythemia vera. Which of the following symptoms is expected? Select all that apply. Come on in. This is Scary Topics game night. This is a blood thing, so... All right. A patient is admitted to the hospital with suspected polycythemia vera. Which of the following symptoms is expected? Select all that apply. So is it going to be weight loss, increased clotting time, hypertension, or headaches? And you can pick as many as you need to, but make sure that they're as right as possible. All right. You got 14 seconds on the clock. The answers are rolling, rolling, rolling in. This is game night here. Remar review. You made it. You made it. The correct answer is, did you get it? Mm. Oh, you should have picked increased clotting time, hypertension, and headaches. So 196, uh, you got it right. Here's our leadership board on the score. Sarah Kay, you got it right. And remember, with polycythemia vera, guys, this is a condition in which the bone marrow produces too many red blood cells. And so because of that, patients can experience headache, dizziness, increased clotting times. Uh, weight loss was not a part of polycythemia vera. If you have been studying with me on Winning Wednesdays, this came directly from Winning Wednesdays. Here we go. Next question. A nurse is caring for a patient with a platelet count of 20,000 microliters. Which of the following is an important intervention? Observe for evidence of spontaneous bleeding. That's red. The yellow is limit visitors to family only. Blue is give aspirin in case of headaches. Or four, impose immune precautions. 
Oh, what are we going to do in this case? Think about it. We're talking about another blood issue for Scary Topics. What happens when the platelet count is 20,000? Is that is that a is that a too high problem or a too low problem? I don't want to give the answers away. They're rolling, rolling, rolling in. You guys are doing it. You guys are doing it great. I see the answers. So yes, make sure you have out your secondary device so you can answer the questions. The correct answer. Woo! A lot of you got that one right. You know when the platelets are low. What does that mean? Hey, we got a new leader already. Here we go. We need to watch for evidence of spontaneous bleeding when you have a low platelet count like that, guys. So um, that is under 30,000, you're going to have spontaneous petechiae and bruising, particularly on the extremities. Another Winning Wednesday topic. Which of the following is the most important nursing action when caring for a neutropenic patient? Okay, which of the following is the most important nursing action when caring for a neutropenic patient? Is it the red? Change the disposable mask immediately after use. Yellow, change gloves immediately after use. Blue, minimize patient contact. Or is it green? Minimize conversation with the patient. This is good. This one is really good. We're talking about a neutropenic patient. And are you going to change the mask immediately after use? Change the gloves immediately after use? Or minimize patient contact? Or just minimize the conversation with the patient? Which one is going to be most appropriate? I'm so excited for this game night, y'all. I don't know. Correct answer. Let's see how many people got it right. Oh, the correct answer was change gloves immediately after use. Let's talk about why it is. All right. All right. The neutropenic patient is at risk of infection. So changing the gloves immediately after use protects the patient from contamination with organisms picked up on hospital surfaces. All right. That's the correct answer there. Moving on. Next question. Here we go. About the blood in the body. What is the largest component of blood in our body? What is the largest component of blood in our body? Is it the red water? The yellow proteins? The blue red blood cells? Or the green white blood cells? Mmm. This is a good one. Thinking about the composition of your blood, what is the largest component of it? Is it the water? Is it the proteins in the blood? How big are the red blood cells? How big are the red blood cells? And also the white blood cells. What say if you guys, what say if you guys in this matter? Ah. The answers are rolling, rolling, rolling in, even until the very last one. Did we get it right? Yes, the majority of you did get this one right. Do we have a new leadership board? Ah, it's, it's here still. Water is the largest part of our blood volume. That just makes sense, right? That just makes sense. What do we have next? Oh, this is quick facts. Which blood type is the universal recipient for blood transfusions? Is it A? Is it B? Is it O? Or is it AB? These answers are coming in fast, 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 fast. <laughs> All right. We're talking about the universal recipient, not to be confused with the universal donor. Mm. Did I trip you up there? The universal recipient for blood transfusions, is it A, is it B, is it O, or is it A, B? Do you know your fundamentals? Scary topics. Don't forget, guys, we are doing something new every night up until Thursday. So tomorrow I have a very special winning Wednesday for you. And then we have our scary topics in Clex Review is coming at you right here on Facebook and YouTube. You don't want to miss it. You really don't. 
is going to be scare, scarily good. All right. Did you guys get it right? Ah, the majority of you did not get this one right. The correct answer for this is AB. All right. Shout out to AB on Team Remar. The AB blood positive type, um, AB positive blood type is known as the universal recipient because AB positive patients can receive blood from all blood types. It's a beautiful thing. All right, here we go. We are moving on. This is double the points. This is your chance. Hemophilia A is an, this is definitely double points. Hemophilia A, is it an autosomal dominant disorder? Autosomal recessive disorder? X-linked dominant disorder or X-linked recessive disorder? I am wanting to know who is going to get this. I think this is going to change the leadership board because this is certainly, certainly something that you learn in um, biology as a part of your pre-nursing classes. So do you remember this when we're talking about hemophilia and we're talking about the children that the two parents have and if parents have traits of hemophilia? Mm-hmm. The answers are coming in a little bit slower for this one. People are really thinking about it. Or you're looking it up. Don't cheat. Don't cheat. What is hemophilia A? It is. And let's see who got it right. Let's see how many people got this one right. Ah, the majority of you thought it was yellow, but it was actually green. So I knew the leadership board would change. We got new leaders up on the scoreboard. That's the way it goes. This is an X-linked recessive disorder. Hemophilia A and hemophilia B are X-linked recessive patterns. So remember that, guys. Okay, these fall on the X chromosome. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. Uh-huh. I'm taking it back, y'all. Pulmonary veins carry blood to the, is it the lungs? Is it the aorta? Is it the left atrium or is it the right atrium? You either know it or you don't. But in this instance, if you know it, you're going to win some cash tonight. And that's what it's about. <laughs> this is about this information being so scary the scariest part is that most of you guys actually know this information, right? And that's why there's very few people that like to have long discussions with nurses because we somehow always bring it back to the body because that's our expertise and our specialty. I love talking about this stuff with you guys. Y'all are my people tonight. Pulmonary veins, they're carrying blood. If you think about it, is it oxygenated blood or deoxygenated blood? What do you guys think? Let's see who got it right. Oh, it is the left atrium. Okay, let's see. Did that shift a little bit? All right. It is the left atrium. Pulmonary veins bring oxygen-rich blood to the left atrium, and the aorta carries that oxygen-rich blood to the body from the left ventricle. All right. Here we go. We are moving on. Oh, you might get this one. Quick fingers for this one. A moving blood clot is called a, is it a thrombus? Is it a platelet club, plug? Is it a proagulant or is it an embolus? Which one is it? Oh, this one is fast. You guys are fast on this one. I know you can get it down to two. So is it a thrombus or is it an embolus? I'm helped you. I did a 50-50, 50-50 share. Hmm. And remember, when we talk about the moving blood clot, there are so many conditions for NCLEX that would precipitate something like this, such as atrial fibrillation, right? Um, that can cause a patient to eventually have a moving blood clot because that blood is, is, is just sitting there and it's getting thick and clumped up, all right? Good job, good job. Bring the answers in. We have over 700 people watching. Unbelievable. All right, and most of you did get the correct answer for the embolus, and we got a new leader. It's happening. An embolus is anything that moves through the blood vessels, all right? So it's constantly moving through the blood vessels until it meets a blood vessel that it cannot pass, and that's when you have an issue. All right, so people have embolisms going all through their body and sometimes they don't even know about it until it 
comes to that one that one vessel. Okay, here we go. More blood stuff. Type and screen are used for patients who may potentially need blood and for all patients being considered for surgery. Is this true? Is this false? Is this not applicable? Or is this true, but sometimes false? I'm talking about a type and screen are used for patients who may potentially need blood, all right? And for all patients being considered for surgery. Is this true? Is it false? Is it not applicable? Type of screens are not applicable to the scenario. Or is it true, but sometimes it's false? What do you guys think? <laughs> All right. What do you think? And you guys are just, I'm saying, I'm seeing you guys answer in real time. You're answering on your game. Only those people who are answering in Kahoot are going to get the opportunity to win the money on tonight. So get it how you live. Get it how you live. The correct answer here. Uh, most everybody got that right. I'm proud of you guys. Let's see. Moving on up. Mel P, I see you still there. That answer is true. Type and screens are used to determine um, the patient's blood type, their ABO, their R, um, RHD, and screening them for uh, atypical antibodies. So everybody gets to type and screen if they may need blood. All right. Which part of the heart transports unoxygenated blood to the lungs? Some basic anatomy here. What part of the heart transports unoxygenated blood to the lungs? Is it the right ventricle, the pulmonary artery, the left ventricle, or the pulmonary vein? What do you guys think? Whew, this one is a tricky one, I know. I know it's a tricky one. Um... But hopefully, you were paying attention. Hopefully, you were paying attention to the last, well, the previous question, the question before. <laughs> All right. What part of the heart transports unoxygenated blood to the lungs? Nurses, you guys are so competitive. It's so crazy how competitive nurses are. But I love it. I love it. This is why game night is so popular. Because you guys are ready for these moments. Let's see how many people got this one right. It's going to show us here. New leader, new leaderboard. I'm not sure. Oh, the majority of you did get it right. The pulmonary artery. And Mel P is back on top. Mel P might be working. I don't know. Mel P seems like she always. All right, here we go. The pulmonary uh, artery carries oxygen poor blood from the right ventricle into the lungs where oxygen enters the bloodstream. Yeah. Next question is right here. All right, and we got double the points for you. When cleaning a wound, the nurse should, is it red, go over the wound twice and discard the swab? Yellow, move from the outer region of the wound toward the center. Blue, start at the drainage site and move outward with circular motions or cleanse the area around the drain and then clean the incision. Mm. Cleaning a wound, what is the best protocol for doing it? Do you remember this in skills lab? What is the best way to clean this wound? Going over the wound twice and discarding that swab, move from the outer region of the wound toward the center, start at the drainage site and move outward with circular motions or clean the area around the drain and then clean the incision. Woo. Oh my goodness, good job, you guys. Wow, for double the points, amazing. We're racking up points here. We almost got 10,000 points. Definitely start at the drainage site and move outward in circular motion. So you want to clean the wound first and go outwards instead of bringing things down into the area of the wound. So that is the right way. But you guys got that right. You knew that. I'm proud of you. Here we go. Another double to point. Get ready. Using the Braden scale, which client is at highest risk for developing a pressure ulcer? Mm. Mm. Using the Braden scale, which client is at risk for developing a pressure ulcer? One with the score of 15, one with the score of 18, one with the score of 20, or one with the score of 23? Mark, do you know? 
Do you know? Do you know, Mark? Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> Mark, shout out to Mark. He got us up and running today when it was looking really sketchy, really impossible that this thing was going to happen. But thank you so much. We appreciate you, Mark. Okay. Shout out to Team Remar right now. Also watching online and cheering you guys on. They're also ready to answer any questions you might have about Remar nurses and how we are passing the NCLEX. Doing fun things like this. I love our community events. You guys are here and you are ready to go. Correct answer is going to be who got it right. Let's see how many people got it right. Ah, the majority. Let's see. This was double. This was double the points, I think, too. We crossed the 10,000 mark. One with the score of 15 because clients with the score of less than 18 are at risk for developing a pressure ulcer. OK, so the lower the score, the more at risk you are. The maximum score is 23. All right, another quiz question. I'm just keeping it going. A client has an ischemic wound. This means that there has been, is it a de deficient blood supply to the tissue? Damage to the small blood vessels, compression of the tissue, or a combination of friction and pressure? What are we saying about this? What are we saying? When a patient has an ischemic wound, really, what does that mean? What does that mean? Let me see the comments here. All right. And also, if you guys don't know, we have released our Black Friday sale actually this week. So we're doing 50% off of our current NCLEX review program this week. That's scary. That's scary. But we want to make sure you guys get your nursing license as quickly as possible. So we're doing a quick start. If you start right now, you will also get a downloadable workbook. Hey, get you started. And you guys knew this as well. A lot of people are going to get points for this. And the, the leaders kept the leaders board. Let's see if we can change it up, switch it up. Here we go. It was a deficient blood supply to the tissue. And that is how uh, pressure ulcers are formed with ischemia involved. All right. Here we go. Next quiz question. When turning a client, the nurse notices a reddened area on the coccyx. What skin care intervention should the nurse use on this area? Is it red? Clean area with mild soap and water, then pat dry. Yellow. Apply dilute hydrogen peroxide and water mixture and use a heat lamp on the area. Blue, soak the area in normal saline solution. Or green, wash the area with an astringent. Mm. What should we do here, people? Nurses, you're going to be out in the field. What are you going to do when you turn over your patient and you start to see redness? You start to see the non-blanchable redness on the area of the coccyx. This place is getting a lot of pressure how should we take care of the skin on this area? Did you get it right? Did you get it right? Ah, you did get it right. You guys know, you guys know that cleaning the area with mouth soap and keeping it dry is going to be the best precaution out of the, th out of the choices that were listed. Remember for NCLEX, you got to look at the best one from the ones that you're given. Next question is this, double the points. Here we go. The home health nurse visits a male client to provide wound care and finds the client lethargic and confused. His wife states he fell down the stairs two hours ago. What should the nurse do? This is a fast question. Go ahead and read those options and give me the right answer quickly, 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 quickly. Ah, and that countdown was fast all right you had to be a fast reader for that one guys 48 of you were able to get the answer in i gotta keep going here we go moving on here sending the client to the er for immediate evaluation Woo, those countdowns were fast all right we gotta pay attention to the countdown now and the question all right here is the next question a triage nurse has four clients and they arrive in the emergency department within 15 minutes. Which client should the triage nurse send back 
first. Is it a two month old infant who has a bulging fontanelle when crying? A teenager who got a singed beard while camping? An elderly client with frequent liquid brown colored stools? Or a middle aged client with intermittent pain behind the right scapula? All right. Put those answers in the comments. Quickly, we are talking about who should be seen first. A lot of you guys are picking A. Um, okay, okay. A lot of you guys are picking A here. And uh, some of you guys are picking the yellow. All right, but what is the right answer? Go ahead and get those answers in quickly. The countdown is going on and the correct answer is, yes, the correct answer was actually the yellow. Did you guys get that one right? Okay, you may have seen this one. The teenager who got a singed beard because this puts the patient at risk for a burn, right? If the beard is singed, um, then that means the respiratory tract could have also been damaged as well. Um, and I'm not sure why that's a girl there because it should be a bearded, singed teenage boy. <laughs> All right, here we go. Next question here. A nurse enters a client's room to discover that the client has no pulse and no respirations. No pulse, no respirations. After calling for help, the first action the nurse should take is, is it start a peripheral IV. Initiate high quality chest compressions establish an airway or obtain the crash cart. Woo! I am I am just waiting to see if you guys get this one right. And I really hope you do. I don't think once you answer you can't go back. You can't go back. So you may have to take some time and, and really unwrap and compress this one. We're talking about the nurse is entering a client's room, okay? The client has no pulse and no respirations. After calling for help, the first action, not the second, but the first. A lot of you got it right. The majority of you did get it right. Oh my goodness. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Remember, the American Heart Association says now we got to start with the chest compressions rather than checking the airway. Good job, Remar nurses. All right, here we go. A 15-year-old female ingested 15 tablets of maximum strength, acetaminophen, 45 minutes ago and is rushed to the ED. After calling for help, the first action the nurse should take is... Is it red gastric lavage? Yellow, administer acetomucamus orally. Blue, start in IV dextrose, 5% at 33, normal saline to keep the vein open. Or have the patient drink activated charcoal mixed with water. Hmm. What do you guys think? This is interesting. Mm. And I'm loving, I'm loving the participation. We almost have a thousand nurses right now studying on this Wednesday night. That's phenomenal, like really phenomenal. Um, and the answers are all over the place. What is the right one? Ah, gastric lavage, gastric lavage. Did you get that one right? We need to rinse out that stomach Gastric lavage is the acetaminophen overdose um, is extremely toxic to the liver. So we want to remove as much as the drug as possible. This is the first step in the treatment um, of an overdose. We want to get the medication out of the system because remember with um, PO medication, sometimes it takes about an hour for the liver to metabolize it. So if we're in that, if we are within that hour range, we should be trying to remove the medication. We should be trying to remove it. All right, here we go. Another quiz question. The nurse is caring for clients in the outpatient clinic. The nurse returns to the desk and is given four phone messages. Okay, from the four phone messages, which of the following phone message should the nurse return first? Is it Red, a client with an indwelling Foley catheter reports bad smelling urine. 
yellow. A client who just had a nine pound baby three days ago and is reporting painful breasts. Blue, a client post cataract removal and has been constipated for three days. Or green, a client experiencing diarrhea and stomach cramps after eating a large meal. Ooh. Love it. One of these patients is not safe. One of these patients is actually going to be in danger. Okay. There is the pin up on the screen for those of you who want to join in. We're playing Kahoot. And a lot of you got it right. The majority of you got it right. Oh, my goodness. You guys are not playing today. You did not come to play. All right, Muna, I see you creeping on the come up. A client who had a cataract lens removed four days ago and is constipated for three days, we know the straining can cause increased ocular pressure, and that is a no-no after eye surgery. Okay, so the nurse needs to call that patient back right away. Here we go. The nurse is supervising a student nurse administer a tube feeding to a client with a tracheostomy. Okay, so we're doing tube feeding to a client with the tracheostomy. The nurse would intervene if which of the following was observed. Okay, is it red? The student nurse places the client in a supine position. Yellow, the student nurse aspirates um, and returns the uh, residual stomach contents. Blue, a student nurse checks the pH of the gastric content. Or green, the student nurse checks the bowel sounds for five minutes in each quadrant. When, when should that nurse supervising the student nurse step in and say, wait, 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 wait. You should not do which of the following. You should not do which of the following. All right, Remar nurses, this is your time where you can get rewarded for all that studying and all that paying attention in nursing class. And the correct answer was the student nurse places the client in the supine position. And we got a new leader. Amazing. All right. Because that puts our patient at risk for aspirations. The, the student should place that client in the semi Fowler's position. Okay, let's see what's going on. We are close to wrapping it up. The nurse is caring for clients in the same day surgery unit. It is most important for the nurse to further investigate which of the following client statements. Is it red? I take an herbal dietary supplement to lose weight. Is it yellow? I had acute glomerulonephritis 10 years ago. Blue. I perform yoga and walk on my treadmill every day. Or green, I took my blood pressure medication three hours ago. All right, we are in the setting of same day surgery unit. Tell me what you know about it. What concerns you the most? What statement is a red flag for the patient who is supposed to have surgery possibly today. I love it. Public safety is in the nurse's hands. Correct answer. Yes, you guys know what you know about herbal supplements. Why do we care about herbal supplements? What is the concern? You guys know, there's some things, right? So herbal supplements, um, sometimes they resemble amphetamines and may cause palpitations of the heart, right? If they're taking an herbal supplement as an appetite suppressant to lose weight, Others may cause what? What do herbal supplements? Herbal, others may cause bleeding, right? So same day surgery, uh -uh. we got to figure it out. I'm moving on, moving on. Double the points. The nurse is pre preparing to examine the client's thyroid gland, okay? You're examining the client's thyroid gland. Which of the following statements if made by the nurse is best? Red, would you like a Band-Aid? Yellow. Here's a glass of water. Blue, I will be using this tape measure. Or green, please use this specimen cup. Let me see my comments. All right. Put that answer in. Put that answer in. 
Oh, you got you guys are really you guys are really understanding the assignment on tonight. We have over 900 nurses studying on a random Tuesday night. Guinness World Book of Records, where are you? Because we are breaking world records tonight. That's all right. We know. We know how strong the community is. Correct answer. Did you guys get it? I hope so. You did. You did. You really did it. You really did it. The glass of water is going to help us to palpate and examine that thyroid gland. Whew. Skills lab helped us out right there. Next question is this. The nurse is preparing to insert an indwelling catheter to a patient. Okay, into a patient. It would be most important for the nurse to take which of the following actions? It would be most important for the nurse to take which of the following actions? Is it red? Place all supplies close to the edge of the table. Yellow. Keep the field holding the supplies in front of the nurse. Blue. Set up the field below the nurse's waist level or green, add only clean supplies to the field. What do you guys say? What do you guys say? Ah, I gotta get this. All right, the answers are rolling in and super proud of all the participation that is happening on right now. Good job, guys. Uh-huh, you gotta you gotta keep that sterile field sterile. Anastasia, I see you on the come up. Almost 20,000. Yes, wow. Keeping the field holding the supplies in front of the patient. All of the other supplies, putting it below the waist level, putting it on the edge of the table, breaks the sterile field. That's not gonna be great. That's not gonna be great. Okay. Um, in caring for a client with dementia, the nurse should give highest priority to which of the following goals? Okay. Red, keeping the client alive. Yellow, ensure that the client has an adequate fluid intake. Blue, returning the client to a functional role in the community. Green, maintenance of an optimal level of functioning. What? In caring for a client with dementia, the nurse should give highest priority to which of the following goals? Keeping the client alive, ensuring that the client has an adequate fluid intake, returning the client to a functional role in the community, or maintenance of an optimal level of functioning. What do you guys think? Yes, 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 yes. I see you guys. This is, okay, most of you guys are saying, is it green? It is, it is, yes. All right. And the fastest person is gonna get the points. Mark, are you playing? Uh oh, we got a mark plan. All right. Maintenance of an optimal level of functioning. Dementia is characterized by severe prolonged impairment, which is often irreversible. The main focus of care is to maintain an optimal level of functioning for as long as possible, for as long as possible. I'm moving on. I think we're getting close. This is the last question. Okay. The nurse enters the room and discovers that the client has slurred speech, right sided paralysis, and unequal pupils. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first? Call a physician. Assess the respiratory status. Determine the level of consciousness or perform a complete neurological evaluation. The nurse enters the room and discovers that the client has slurred speech, right-sided paralysis, and unequal pupils. Which of the following actions should the nurse take first? Call the physician. Assess the respiratory status. Determine the level of consciousness. Perform a complete neurological evaluation. All right, guys, go ahead and mark, log those answers in. What do you think first? Prioritization is so tough. It's so much of the NCLEX exam. You've got to be prepared for it. You've got to get ready for it, okay? This is Remar Nurse Game Night. 
a lot of you got it right. The majority of you got it right. Assessing the respiratory status is indeed, is indeed the next most appropriate step. All right, here is our podium. Let's give it up for our winners. Third place, Anastasia. You will get the $50 prize. Hallelujah. You gonna get $75. And number one, shout out if this is you. Lala, you snuck up in there and you are our winner. We had some runner ups, but congratulations, Lala, for playing tonight. You will get a $100 prize. All I need you to do is just screenshot me your credentials, right? That you got first, second, or third place. And I'm going to send you in that amount. Thank you guys so much. Oh my goodness. All right, you are able to play more with me. Practice definitely does make perfect around here. And we did it. We had a successful game night, guys. And I am so honored that so many of you, so many of you hopped on here on a Tuesday night and you are keeping it going with our Inclextoberfest. This is Inclextoberfest. So if you enjoyed tonight, don't forget tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern time, we will have our winning Wednesday coming at you. And then Thursday is also the scary topic Inclex review. So if you have not signed up for it, all right, if you have not signed up for it, just go to the website, remarnurse.com forward slash games. And that is how you will be able to get the downloadable workbook for scary topics, which is happening on Thursday, on Thursday. All right, guys. So it was a great time. I'm so glad that you guys joined me. But remember this, this week is scary topics, but nothing, nothing is scarier than not having your nursing license at the end of this year. All right, 2022 is coming to an end. And I want for you guys to be licensed professional nurses because nothing scarier is than staying at your current job or um, not becoming a nurse and being able to live the life that you want. All right. So I will see you on tomorrow. Congratulations to all of our winners. You guys, you guys are getting it. All right. If you have questions about your virtual trainer, if you heard me say that the 50% off of the program sale is happening now um, and you want to learn more information about how you can get started in my full NCLEX review, just send an email to support at remarreview.com. Support at remarreview.com. And I will talk to you later. As always, guys, you know, I say this all the time. Say it with me until tomorrow. You can, you will, and you must pass in clicks. That's right. You got to do it. You can do it. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.